Hi, I'm Paul Lefevre, the Real Software Developer Evangelist. I get a lot of questions from people asking how to use databases at Real Studio, particularly those coming from uh, tools like FileMaker or Access. Well, it turns out using databases at Real Studio is actually pretty easy, but I think an example is going to help a lot of you. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to create, add table, add data, and display the data using SQLite. So let's get started. Start up Real Studio and create a new project. Change the window 1 name to SQLite window. And set up its layout like this. You want to have four buttons on the left. These are going to be the four steps that I'm going to show you how to do today. I'm going to create a SQLite database. I'll expand the property list here so you can see what I've named these things. You can see I've called this create DB button. We're going to create a table. We call that create table button. Add some sample data. And then we're going to show the data here in this list box at the bottom. Next to the top three buttons, you want to put a label. This is going to show the status of the task or an error message should something have occurred. For the list box, you want to set it to have four columns and a heading. Column count four has heading. And the four values for the heading are ID, name, coach, and city, each separated by a tab. These are the four columns of the table that we'll be creating. Let's look at the code in the action event of this button. I'm going to double click it. And you can see I've already put code in here to help speed things along, but I'll go through each of it with you. Before we get too far along, so that we can use the database in different parts of the window, we're going to create a property. Make this a little bigger here. MDB as real SQL database. This is going to store our connection to the database so that it can be used. And you'll also want to create while you're down here another property called M is connected as boolean and that's going to be used to track that the, you're actually connected to the SQLite database. I'll tend to mix the terms real SQL database and SQLite together uh, from time to time and that's because they are one and the same. Uh, real SQL database is just uh, our name for a SQLite database. So any uh, real SQL database that you happen to create using Real Studio can be used and edited and worked with by any tool that happens to work with SQLite databases. Now the code. Uh, the first thing I want to do is create a, a folder with pointing a folder item pointing to a file that will contain the database. SQLite databases actually exist in a file. And for this particular example, we're just going to put the file right next to the uh, the executable that's running. So we get uh, a folder item here, just calling it example.sqlite. And if it already exists, we're going to delete it. Then we create the new database, tell it which file to use by setting its database file property to the folder item, call the create database file method to actually create the database, set the m is connected property to true, because now we are connected, and update the label to say that the database was created. If there is any sort of problem, connected is false, and we display the, the error in the label. So I'm going to run this. And if I click the button, you'll see that it created the database successfully. And to verify that, we can open up where the project is, go to the build folder, and you'll see that right next to the executable, is a file here called example.sqlite. So we'll move on to step two. Create the team table. For this example, we're just going to create a simple table with four columns. I call it team because that's a fun little thing to do. Uh, the four columns are ID, which is essentially the primary key, the name of the team, the coach for the team, and the city the team is in. Like I said, pretty simple. This is the SQL command for SQLite that uh, creates a table. And you'll see the syntax is create table. 
you put the name of the table in this came t in this case team and then in parentheses you put the name of the columns followed by their data types the first column is called ID that's the primary key so we're going to make it an integer not null type and then name is a text coach is a text city is a text and then lastly we actually specifically tell it that the primary key is the ID column SQL commands are often uh, terminated with a semicolon, which you can see here at the end. Um, technically, that's not needed here with Real Studio. We could leave the semicolon off and the command would, would uh, execute properly. Now that we've created the SQL and stored it in our variable, we check if we're connected. And if we are, call the SQL execute command, passing in the SQL. If there's an error, we'll display what it is and then return from the method. Otherwise, we display that the table was created successfully. And if you try to uh, create the table before you've actually created the database, we'll display a message indicating that. So we can run the project again, create the database, create the table. For step three, we're going to add some sample data to this table. This is going to use a helper method to add the rows to the table. We're just going to add three rows to keep things simple. And as you can see here, the three rows are going to add. We're going to add three teams, seagulls, pigeons, and crows, each with their own coach and their own city. Each row is added using our add team row method. And that returns true if the row was successfully added and false if it wasn't. So if we've enabled add three rows, we update the status to indicate that. If there was any problem, we say there was an error. So let's take a look at add team rows, or add team row as it is singular. Has the parameters for each of the columns who values that we want to add and the return type. If we're not connected, display a message. Otherwise, we're going to create the row. We do that by using a database record. So we create a row as a new database record and then we specify the value for each column. The name column gets the name parameter, coach column gets the coach parameter, and the city column gets the city parameter. Then we insert this into the database using the insert record method. And we tell it to insert this record into the team table. So team is specified here, and then the row that we've created up above here is specified. Again, if there's an error, we display it and return false. We run that, create the database, create the table, add the sample data. All working fine. Let's see what happens if we tend to do this in the wrong order. Well, if you try to create the table before you've got the database, we're displaying our message box. Same thing if you add data before the database. If you create your database and try to add data before you've created the table, there's be a display of there is an error adding the data. So our error handling it seems to be working properly. The last steps actually show this data that was added to the table. So again, in the action event, uh, we check if we're connected. First thing is to delete the rows of the list box. This will prevent uh, data from repeating itself each time you went to show it. The SQL is very simple. We're just saying select all the columns from the team table and it's going to get every row. In our case this is three rows. We use a record set to do this and the record set right here is defined and we call the SQL select method passing in the SQL to populate the record set. We check that the record set is not nil. It can be nil if there's a typo in the SQL for example. Uh, if you type say teams plural instead of singular. So if we know that the, that the SQL process successfully, we can then proceed to loop through the record set. This is done in the while loop, and we just keep looping until we reach the end of file or the end of the record set. And for each row that is found, we call add row on the list box and add the row of data, getting each of the columns values. So then we get the ID and its string value, the name, the coach, and the city and that's added as one row to the list box. Call the move next method to get the next row available 
and that proceeds and when once the last row is retrieved and a file becomes true we exit the while loop can then close the record set so let's see how that works create the database create the table add the data show the data and there it is a couple minor things to finalize the windows close event has a couple lines of code here to actually close the database when the window itself closes and we check if the database is not nil and we call the close method on it technically not needed because this happens automatically when the database goes out of scope but it's a nice house cleaning tip to do and then lastly um, we created the m is connected property uh, but I'm accessing it using an, a method called is connected and this has the, not only does it return the value of m is connected but it does a little check first and it checks to see if the database itself is nil and if it is it sets is connected to false uh, this just is kind of an automatic thing so that for some reason if the database became nil uh, and, and you checked is connected later it wouldn't mistakenly say true so there you have it that's a quick little example to show you how to use a SQLite database at Real Studio. I hope you found it helpful.